Okay, let's talk about these two little symbols here and the difference between them because all these are, you know, they're two little symbols. You might think, oh, well, there might be uh, not that much of a difference. In fact, there is a huge difference. And if you really want to impress your math teacher, you will use the right symbol when the situation arises, okay? And I can tell you right now, uh, many students uh, will use the wrong symbol and some math teachers kind of let it slide a little bit. But again, if you want to be absolute uh, precisely correct uh, in the way you write math or express yourself mathematically and you really want to impress your math teacher, then stick around for a minute or two because I'm going to show you exactly why you need to be paying attention to this symbol and this symbol. Okay. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm gonna be launching pre-calculus here um, like in a matter of days. However, I'm gonna be getting a huge uh, uh, request um, as I'm promoting my pre-calculus course, people need it urgently. So if that is your case, um, go to my website, drop me a line. I'll give you a link to my beta uh, version pre-calculus course. Uh, basically, it's completed. It just There's a few little tiny things I want to add in. before. But I'll give you access. If you're like in a dire situation, a lot of people need help with pre-calculus. So uh, just go to my website and let me know your situation. I'll send you a link. Now, I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, ALEX exam, uh, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, uh, nursing school entrance exam, many, many other type of exams. Guess what they all have in common is mathematics, so I can help you prepare. Again, just go to my uh, website, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, okay, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you who are having a difficult time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about uh, wanting to improve in math, if you don't like your current math situation, well, you're going to have to be serious about this, and that is note-taking. You're going to have to be great at note-taking. Now, I've been teaching math for decades, and there's one thing I can point to with consistency, and that is those students who take great math notes almost always have these kind of grades at the end of the year, and the reverse is true. Those students who are like, yeah, I take notes like once a week, uh, they have grades like this, okay? So why is that? Well, because you're distracted. You're checking out your cell phone. You're talking to your buddies. You're doing your homework in your other class. And yeah, you know, I get it. You know, all the stuff that I was doing way back in the 1980s, except the cell phone part. We had cell phones, but they cost like uh, $10,000 and they were like massive and you couldn't do anything cool with them. Anyways, I didn't have one of those. But if I did have a cell phone, like a modern cell phone, I don't even think I got to graduate because these are completely distracting. So you got to put away all the distractions and note taking is really about being focused. Okay. So focus is the key to success in anything you do. So, you know, take a look at your notes. I can guarantee you most of you watching this video, if you are math students, can improve. But in the meantime, you still need something to study from so you can use my notes, which would include pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so we're going to talk about this symbol and this symbol. This is not trivial stuff. And if you do this, you use these symbols precisely, well, then your math teacher is going to be like, man, you know, that's really, uh, that's excellent. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. But anyways, let's get to these symbols. What am I talking about? All right, let's take a look at these two equations here. And let's look at this first one. 2x is equal to 8. Okay, I want your eyes over here. So how do I solve this equation? Well, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 2. And I get my answer, x is equal to 4. And that is the solution. Okay, x is, in fact, equal to 4. That is the actual uh, solution to this original equation right here. 2x is equal to 8. Now, why is that? Because I can plug in this 4 right here where x is, so that would be 2 times 4, and in fact, uh, the left-hand side will equal the right-hand side. This is the solution because when I plug this in, I replace that x with this number, I get 8 is equal to 8, which is a fact, a true statement. No problem. Most of you probably already know that. 
Okay, but now let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. I said, well, solve this equation. I would do what? Well, I would divide both sides of the equation by 2. Now I get this answer. I get x is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now, what a lot of students are going to do is they're going to, they're going to go into the calculator and they're going to go, okay, square root of 3, that's 1.732, and there's some other digits here, but we'll just kind of round it to this. They'll go 1.732, uh, and then they'll divide that by 2, which makes sense. I'm not knocking you if you're doing that. And you're trying to get a, a, a decimal value, and you come up with x is equal to 0.866. Right? Now, we have a little problem here. Okay. If I plug in this little 0.866 into my original equation, 2x is equal to the square root of 3, and I go, okay, 2 times 0.866, is that going to, is this left-hand side going to be equal to this right-hand side? Well, no, not exactly, okay? And this is the point I'm going to make. I want to make this point right now because this is very, very, very important. Okay, so... Here is our problem again. 2x is equal to square root of 3, and we have our answer right here. This use of this symbol right here is correct, okay? This is good, all right? This is good. This is bad, okay? This is bad, and this is good. Now, why is this bad? Well, this becomes bad at this point right here, okay? Right at this point. The symbol we should be using is this, okay? And our final answer needs to look like that because this symbol right here, this is the approximate symbol, okay? In mathematics, this means approximately, approximately. Not, this means exactly, okay? Equal means 100%, like that's, uh, you know, it's exactly what it's equal to. Now, at this point, Actually, let me focus over here with this decimal. So as soon as you start rounding decimals, well, you have an approximation. Now, why did I have to round my decimals? Well, if I want a decimal approximation to my answer, the square root of 3 here, this is what we call an irrational number. This goes on and on forever, 1.732. It goes on and on. It's never going to stop. Re uh, it's going to not repeat, and it's not going to end. So it's going to go on to infinity. So practically, if you want a, a practical like decimal value, we are going to have to round off. And there's no problem with that, okay? However, um, our answer you know, to this equation is not x is equal to, perfectly equal to 0.866. It's approximately equal to this because it, it, I can take this decimal and keep refining it, okay? And if I do so, I can make my final answer more and more accurate, okay? So it's very, very uh, technically important that you use this symbol. This is the approximation symbol. Now, if you didn't take the square root of square root of 3 and you just left it in its little form like this, this is the correct symbol to use. This is right. This is equal to, exactly equal to. This is approximately equal to. And this comes up, um, let's look at another example uh, when we're using pi, this is pretty another pretty common place where uh, students make this error. Okay, and again, some math teachers let this slide a little bit. Okay, uh, maybe uh, a good majority won't. They might say something to you, but they may or may not take any points off you. But again, if you want to really impress your math teacher, you want to be precise with these uh, uh, symbols because they actually mean something. So let's take a look at this circle. Let's say we wanted to find the area of this circle again because I know you know this, the area of a circle, the formula for that is area is equal to pi r squared, okay? No problem. The radius is 2, so I'm going to plug in 2 here for r. So area is equal to pi times 2 squared. 2 squared, of course, is 4, so my answer is 4 times pi. So the area of the circle is 4 times pi. This is an exact perfect answer, okay? This is good, okay? So oftentimes, if your teacher says, give me the exact answer, some, when you, in more math, advanced mathematics, this really becomes important, right? So more like at the pre-algebra, algebra one level, maybe you can kind of get away with not the, using the right notation, but as you progress into, you know, uh, college algebra, algebra two, but certainly like pre-calculus, you know, you will, you know, your teacher will say something to you, probably in the, in the form of taking points off of your work, if you use the wrong notation. So this is an ex the exact area of this circle is 4 pi, okay? However, uh, if we want 
the you know kind of a sense of the actual value of it, then we need to find an approximation. Okay, so what's going to determine that is our value of pi. So pi is approximately 3.14. It is not equal to 3.14. It's approximately equal to 3.14. So when I use 3.14, I can use more digits for pi, of course, uh, and I would have a better approximation. But I would take that 3.14, multiply it by 4, because my answer is 4 pi, so 4 times 3.14, and my area is approximately 12.56, of course, whatever unit squared that might be. But this is the appropriate symbol for um, this version of the answer, and this is the appropriate symbol for this version of the answer. This is the exact value. This is the approximate value. Okay, so I, I you know, kind of made this little video because this comes up pretty frequently. I see this happen, and I'm sure uh, you've done this, and you know, I, I know I've done it. I'm convinced of it way back in the good old days until I really, you know, study this in detail. But again. You know, Matt, there are so many tiny little details you got to be paying attention to. That's why when I talk about notes and stuff like that, you might be saying, okay, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, just get on with your video. Stop telling about your notes and yada, yada. But listen, you're here to learn math, okay? Uh, and if you're here to learn math, I'm going to tell you not just about this little symbols. I'm going to tell you how to get to be highly successful in math, okay? Because if you ignore the details, well, if you ignore too many details, you end up with grades like this, okay? So that's my mission, my passion is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. However, I also wanted to uh, emphasize, you know, uh, if you're a math student, you have to have the right study habits to be successful as well. Okay. All right. So hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos, basic to advanced math. Um, all there for you, and I'm posting new content all the time, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.